Tim Kennedy. What up, man? Long time coming, man. We're gonna pumped. Do, we're going to do a quick warm up here. Okay. So, with particular guests, everybody is just dying to know what some of you guys are carrying on you every day for protection yeah. and even just sentimental stuff. So, we like to do a EDC pocket dump warm up. Okay. What are you rocking? I'm I'm pretty straightforward. Uh, I think people over compliment complicate it. So I'm like a kiss guy. Keep it simple, stupid. And so I have my keys. I have my cell phone. Uh, I unfortunately carry two wallets, uh, a work wallet, um, and uh, and then like my regular wallet. Then I have a, a small fixed blade. Um, right now it's a Montana knife. That's uh, the Speed Goat. I love it. I have, Where do you uh, carry it? I, I carry it right on like on the inside of my hip. And Three o'clock. Yep. And then I appendix carry um, just on the inside. So like 245. Um, and then uh, appendix carry a SIG. So What's on your SIG? I have a red dot and um, I'm using, man, what are the name of these? Uh, they're solid core copper and steel rounds that tumble on impact. So that's... Uh, Interesting. Wait, hold on. What are these rounds? Um, they're called Fortis. Fortis? Yep. And I've never heard of this. They do a great job on penetration against soft body armor. And um, they do a great job on penetration of um, metals, aluminums, vehicles. But when they hit water-based things, tissue, they tumble. So um, when you shoot them on ballistic gel, gel, you see great cavity, uh, and they do the two things that I wanted because I used to carry a five seven because I wanted that penetration with mm -hmm. black rounds. So like those were solid steel core bullets, fast v velocity. Um, so yeah, you kind of like you helped launch that that gun, didn't you? Um, the unfortunately the Fort Hood shooter I think oh. launched that gun because that's what he used and that's why he had such a high success and um, ratio of death to w wounded. Um, that's not something anybody wants to talk about, but yeah. when you get to a case study like that, you're like, well, that performed really well. And then in light of a bunch of people wearing body armor, bad guys wearing body armor, the, a bunch of recent shooters have been wearing soft body armor or like level three body armor. So I wanted something that I could just, you know, send five, six rounds center mass and have good rounds on target. Yeah. Um, How many rounds did that hold? Uh, 17. 17 rounds? Yeah. yeah I was, why'd you switch? Why'd you switch to SIG? Um, w with ammo that I love 9 millimeter, mm -hmm. you know, from a Glock 43 to a, you know, SIG 365, um, all of these high capacity, double stacked, but small profile, like, I unfortunately, do you hate those tall, skinny guys that can conceal a like a machine gun on their body? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, when you're 220 pound, you know, five foot eleven troll, it's not as easy to get <laughs> to um, hide things on your body. So uh, I want wanted smaller, concealable, easy to access weapons. So I a big fan of nine millimeter, but I needed something with penetration. Mm -hmm. And now there's been such rapid evolution of penetration with good energy transference in uh, on the ammo side that like all right we're, we're good to go back to nine millimeter yeah yeah why do you feel like you needed penetration power i mean if, if you just look at um i mean look at where we're sitting right now the uh you know that that shooter was set up to to do a bunch of evil until somebody turned the lights out um you know, the CNS, of course, is uh, a fantastic place to put a bullet. Uh, center mass, unfortunately, you know, that that 20 by 10 inches is sometimes difficult to shoot, mm -hmm. um, especially when all the, the only thing that's going to be exposed is an eye in a barrel. Um, when you have a 40 inch by 20 inch wide, you know, like three, four times the size of the target, but it's covered by body armor, all mm -hmm. I can shoot at is the head or whatever portion of the body's exposed. If you look at the North Hollywood shooting, like, I think this was the first time that we really saw how difficult it is with someone in body armor to remove them from the battle space. 
And ultimately, what they had to do was shoot underneath cars and shoot them in the feet and the yeah. knees to put them on the ground. And then once they're on the ground, then 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 they, these were solvable problems. They were outgunned, they were outmatched. And um, you know, this is when cops were still cruising around with shotguns. Yeah. So you got a guy with body armor and you have a shotgun and a nine millimeter, there's nothing like, they're running into hunting stores and trying to borrow hunting rifles from um, a, an FFL off the side of the street so they can put rounds into a guy that's zipping everybody up. That was 20 something years ago. Yeah. And now with the ac- the, the accessibility of body armor, the these douchebags know. I'm with you. You know, it's, it's something that I've, I go back and forth on with the penetration power and the and some and and stopping power, yeah. you know, like a like a hollow point, nine nine mil hollow point. But um, you know, it's I get we learned this lesson back in two thousand five with Green Tip. My platoon did. I mean, it wasn't. What happens if you get into a close engagement with somebody and you're and you're running that five seven? Are they gonna? Is it enough knockdown, or are they gonna? You know, especially if you're a woman. You yeah. know what I mean. So it's that balance of. I mean, what I'm getting at is. We were shooting guys 10, 15 times with green tip. You got 10, 15 little tiny holes. And they didn't even know. They did not even realize they were being shot. Yeah. And uh, nor could they tell which direction they were being shot from. And, um, and uh, I mean, so we were doing center mass, obviously. But, that man, that really – it's just a tough balance, I think. So Yeah. That's always been the question. You know, you uh, – an animal's an animal. I was hunting last weekend. Uh, I was hunting red deer. I shot a ball six five, Creedmoor, and um, into red deer are big elk like animals, and I was, I was shooting like a, a match grade precision rifle bullet, and I was you know, almost a half mile. Six five bullet placement was perfect. You know, straight through the lungs, straight through the heart, and took one step forward and fell. Um, when we're cleaning it, you see a nice entry wound. You see a nice hole going through vital organs. And and then you see the bullet um, impacting the rib on the far side and stopping there. Because mm-hmm. we lost enough energy at six, you know, 700 meters that it doesn't have that same kind of power. Three hours later, this is a meat hunt. This is... Not, you're like, why did you shoot two deer in one day? So um, then I'm shooting a 28 Nostler, and I shot this um, this doe, this this female red deer. She was running and hopping over a fence about 100 meters with a 28 Nostler, and it exploded every organ inside of her chest. Like, there was there was nothing like everything was gelatin, and the yeah. amount of energy that carried at that range um, with that specific bullet that is designed to transfer energy into um, permanent life ending moments it's uh you know on, on that spectrum of like a hard bullet traveling fast at a far distance not carrying energy and transferring it into a target to the opposite end which is this crazy fast high energy bullet that is carrying all of the energy into the target and then transferring it it is like but it's always that question like well how far do you want to shoot what how far do you want to get into the thing that you're shooting how much energy you're, that's that's the question that we've been asking for forever yeah yeah. What, um, back to your carry, which, which SIG are you rocking? The 365. 365? Yeah. Which one? The Legion. The Legion? Yeah. I'll be damned. Well, I got a little something for you. No. Yeah, yeah. So I got a buddy over at SIG. Maybe you know him, Jason. Yes. But uh, I told him you were coming on, so he wanted me to show you something. Sounds like you're not a stranger to no, it, though. No, I am not a stranger to this, and this is like uh, <laughs> so, this is so awesome. Um, the uh, oh, it was sick. It's all metal. Yeah. Have you shot they, this? I have. I literally just picked that up. Okay, th- this is. I shot it first um, at New Hampshire at Sig, and um, I was like. That's amazing. The little magazine, they, they this little tiny magazine. Well, not too much. Yeah. Where it's you know it's gonna print whatsoever. And you know, micro red dot almost this exact same setup. They have this muzzle brake on the front, which makes it shoot super flat. And I get on. You know, anytime you shoot like a compact or subcompact gun, and you're like, man, that's there's not enough real estate for my gigantic yep. meat hooks to get on here. And I got I shot this gun, and there were 
we had some a crazy table of things to play with. Yeah. And I didn't walk away from this. Uh, and I left there and went and immediately ordered one to my gun store. So the, the uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put it out. The gun that I'm using is actually my gun store's gun. So it's gonna go back on my wall because this one I own. <laughs> Um, there's like a Tim Kennedy section of the gun store, which are like Tim's guns that are, yeah. that are like, I have a revolving door of different guns that I'm always playing with. So I actually don't own that gun. My gun store owns that gun. So this will legitimately be like the gun that I'm carrying. This is amazing, Sean. Thank you. Yeah. Well, so th they came out with these new optics too. I don't know. That's a SIG optic. Yeah. So the, the other one, I'm not going to lie, I wasn't too pleased with, but they updated it. So now... It's got the movement thing, so if you move the gun, if the optic moves, then it automatically turns on. And you yeah. can adjust the brightness. It's really uh, top of the line. And it's all metal. Yeah. You never, like nobody makes all metal guns anymore. No, this is awesome. You know, so. And I love like the, the Legion design that they snuck in here. And the stippling is not so aggressive yeah. that it's gonna hurt your stomach when you're wearing it in the appendix, but it's like, it's aggressive enough where like the grip is awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Dude, this is awesome. Yeah, so. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. That this one's is... mine, oh. but there's a business card in there, so you can just give Jason a shout, and uh, I think he's got something very similar to that Dude, for you. Dude, this is amazing. But um, last thing with EDC, and then we'll, we'll get into the interview, but you had mentioned, at the very beginning, you had mentioned that you think people overcomplicate the EDC. What do you mean by that? Yeah, like a... Uh... So when you look at your area of operation, the place that you're going to be going, you should adjust your battle plan to where you're going to be going. Similarly, when you look at like METTC, your mission, your enemy time, train, friendly forward, like what do I have with me? What is my mission? So if I'm cruising with my family, for example, I want to make sure that I have band-aids that maybe have unicorns on them. Um, I want to have tourniquets that are going to work for my kids. Uh, I want to make sure that I maybe have two sets of car keys, one on my wife, one with me. You know, these are things I'm just going to take a second to think about like, okay, what do I need to do? And what do I need to have on me? Because my mission's a little bit different than like me going into a semi-permissive or non-permissive environment that in a conflict area where like, all right, I'm going to maybe have a machine gun, you know, and I'm like, <laughs> obviously the, the, the spectrum of like, okay, I'm running in the store to pick up my kids. I'm absolutely going to have a gun on me. Um, I'm going to have, like I've built my truck out. So I adjust what I'm carrying for what I'm doing. And I'm not a carrying stuff to be like, hey, this is my EDC. I have a, you know, like a four inch fixed blade. I have a tourniquet. I got a flashlight. I have three magazines. You know, I have a katana in my back, you know, and like, I'm, um, I also have like a, a pocket trunk monkey that I just throw out and starts attacking random things, you know, like <laughs> just relax and take a breath. Your job is to preserve and protect your family and to let blood out of bad guys and keep blood in good guys. Okay, if that's my mission, I only need a couple of things to do that. And uh, and it also has to be not so much that I'll carry every single day that I walk out the door. It has to be so absolute cell phone, keys, wallet, gun. Always. I agree with everything you're saying. I got one last question. Yep. You're in a mall. There's an active shooter. You're going to save everybody? Or are you gonna save your family? My family. Yep. Um, I will not lie to you. Um, there's no way that I can't go back into that mall. Mm -hmm. The family goes to the car, and I'm gonna get them to the car. Um, this is why we have two keys. That beautiful woman is gonna take my beautiful kids, and they're gonna get off the X, and I'm gonna go back in and put that douche bag on the ground. There's, there's no way that I could live with myself mm -hmm. by not going in there. Um, Great answer. Family's not with me, run towards gunfire, mm -hmm. period. Family's with me, get in off the X. Great answer. Love it. Yeah. All right, Tim. Well, thank okay. you. I yeah. appreciate that. Let's get on with the interview. All right. Hey everybody, I'm Sean Ryan. Click here to subscribe to the Sean Ryan Show YouTube channel for the hottest and most compelling interviews that you will not see anywhere else. I've also made a playlist of all the previous SRS episodes so they're easy to find. You can find that right here.